Stellaris Dev Diary 149 technical improvements going 64 bits and increased performance and a total change in the inner workings of the game. So what does that mean? Among other things, going 64 bits means, as they explain, Stellaris is no longer limited to 4 GB of memory and won't crash anymore in situations where it was reaching that limit. For people, and that is crazy good, because I love to play on huge galaxies, who play on huge galaxies with many empty empires, many mods, oh yeah, or well into the 3000s, this <coughs> will be a boon, and it will be a boon if it actually holds what they promise, and there is reason to believe that. So that means also the game will no longer be playable on 32-bit computers or OSs, what that means is, well, the last not compatible to 64-bits processor was released in the 2000s, it was the Pentium 4 I think correct me, I'm, I'm not really an expert in this, but uh, this is what Google claims at least. I've looked it up and the first full 64 bits thing is Windows 7. So if you're on Windows 7 already or newer, you're safe and I leave, believe even before. So the performance. First they're going on and uh, showing a couple of examples they found what would consuming most of our CPU times nowadays. That's basically the check, the, the game checking everything at every day. Ships calculating their daily regeneration when they had full health was one example they cut out. Off-screen icons being updated. Another example, uninhabitable planets doing the same evalu evaluations as populated planets. So uh, they cut down Especially in, in the last thing, they cut down the, the workload in the early game and then off-screen icons being updated, ships calculating their daily regeneration when they're at full health, which means the first thing basically uh, removes a hard late game workload. So if they're correcting this, this means the overall performance will be much better. Why do these seemingly pointless things happen? Well, there's just an, a big network of things that have to be taken care of of the game. So, um, and that is modifiers. And as you can see here, I'll now explain in detail this table and how it works. <laughs> no, I won't. <laughs> I won't. It, it's just there to illustrate that everything is connected to everything else, or most things are connected to everything else. And these are always feedback loops that do something. Only Rarely are there some components of this that don't get like that are just modifiers like what what only uh, has one line connected to the rest is a modifier and other things like with a fleet you can see there are feedback loops and this means yeah, there's a lot being calculated there, especially with the fleet, and that brings us back to the performance ships calculating their daily regeneration when they're at full health. That has consequences for everything, like the fleet is one of the most important things that you look at if you want to improve the performance, because the fleets are the things that are growing massively in the late game. The other thing is the planets. <laughs> There's a lot of uninhabitable planets, but they're, I mean, the number of these is probably going down rather in the late game. So, off-screen icons being updated. Yeah, that's, that's something that is true for the whole course of the game. So, this system is now being replaced by completely the other system. They say no more. For 2.3 Wolf, we've switched to a system of modifier nodes, where each node registers what node they follow and is recalculated when used, when used. So this was not recalculated when used, but was, as you can see here, off-screen icons being updated. So it was also um, being updated constantly when not used. So what happens now is that if you click at something, if you want a feedback from the game, if you want some data, then the game looks it up and calculates the exact number for you, but it doesn't calculate the number uh, in the background to be ready for you all the time. And uh, as AI empires, what you know if you if you play on the observe mode, are basically on par with the player in uh, these feedback loops for yourself and the numbers being available. This means that it is also true for other empires, which means other empires, especially the AI empires, that never will look up 
what they have, but they're just working with the raw numbers and not with a like with the feedback data. That will not be calculated for them anymore. I hope you understand that. It's kind of it's kind of crazy, but I think it worked that way because in observe mode, um, you can clearly see that uh, there is not much that differentiates an AI empire from a player empire in terms of showing things. And it also doesn't really change the speed if you go in observe mode, which will probably um, change now. You will have a big performance increase like for the single player, but you won't have that increase of performance that much for the observer mode because that like the having having ready all, all these numbers is now taken away probably from the AI. So this system has shown remarkable promise and cut the number of big freezes happening around the game uh, down. Yeah, it has some other issues, of course, as everything new. As we continue working with it, it will get better and help both with performance and our programmers' sanity. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot to calculate in a game like Stellaris. And many have said that the, the main thing about Stellaris performance problems is one, the 32 and 64 bits thing, and two, that it doesn't use uh, more than one thread. I'm not sure if that is true, but that was true about other Paradox games at least. And so, if they can manage to let it use hyper-threading, then we'll have a very, very smooth game, and then they can include a better AI. I think there's also something about um, the AI that is notably not that good at the moment. Um, that has to do with calculating power and the very, very low requirements for Stellaris. So, that is, so for everyone to be able to uh, play the same game, they are sacrificing a bit of the AI because the AI is what makes the game, in part, with so many numbers, faster or slower. What's the verdict? Here in the tests, 2.3 Wolf is between 10 and 30 percent faster than 2.2.7 right now, which is crazy good. That's an increase that you you wish to get. I mean, let's say it's on mean 20 percent faster. That will be great. And for for my own thing, I love to play long games, and I love to play from uh, to to have uh, running sometimes my AI tournament where you can participate sending a user empire in, like where AIs play against AIs, and that's usually a thousand years of the AIs against each other. Yeah, that will help a lot. <laughs> because a lot of this increase is in the parts of the game where the game often freezes. That is the late game and where it goes notably slower no one is complaining about the early game or about the first 100 years because that's just great but uh, after 200 300 years it starts and someone has given a graphic i i don't remember that exactly and uh, it is like uh, six or seven times the time you need uh, for a day at like the end of the game compared to the start of the game, which means basically if you play on fastest at the end of the game, that is uh, comparable to playing slow at the start of the game, or, or slowest even. <laughs> and that's, that's a little bit crazy, but that's what they're working on there. Like they are making the, the biggest progress where it matters most, and that is a good method. So Galaxy View Performance Speed 4 I don't know what that is. I think it's fast or something. Unidentified crisis AI one, as you can see here. What do we have here? I, I haven't really seen in that yet. Yes, you can see here that you have 
0 FPS, that's the number, and 60 FPS, that's the number, and you can see here that up until 100 years, 60 FPS is no problem. And then we go down to the 2400 years, and it's still okay, it's in the realm of 40 FPS or something. And basically the AI is the bottleneck, um, uh, not the AI, the, the CPU is the bottleneck, which is, and it's mostly using one core of the CPU. So basically a, a processor that is very quick is better than a processor that has multi-cores uh, for Stellaris at the current state of the game. And you can see here, I would predict that in the old patches, it would even go down here to values like uh, not maybe not zero FPS, but like 10 <laughs> or 20 FPS. But this is holding it up above 30, which is very tolerable. And that would be great. I mean, that would really be great. As you can see here, yeah, there's some countries update flags. What is this blue thing? Fleets, yeah, the fleets starting to go down and look, there's a high number of fleets, but still the game holds well. And we have here the smooth signal. I don't know what the smooth signal is. I should look more into that, the gateway access. Um, yeah, the gateways have also been um, causing freezes, I'd say. And if that notably changes, then it's very good, of course. So and you, ah, you have your here the new archaeological sites. They would probably go down with a with a number in number after the start of the game, right? I don't know. Maybe they are also created. There's pops, as you can see here, because there's a crisis running there too. So um Sobrinity has measured this, and it's worth noting the ship's serial purple line has since been eliminated. Aha, okay, so that's not being calculated anymore if that's what they mean. I hope that is. AI. Another forum favorite. We have done some improvements to the AI. First, with a very notable Glavius AI's creator, namely Glavius. I've done some research now into that, and there's basically two mods that are good for the AI in Stellaris, and they work hand in hand, it's something called an Enhanced AI, and it's the even more prominent Glavius AI mod. What, what they've, they've used with his permission, the job waits to improve general AI job distribution. We've also done the usual pass of polish and improvements, and of course taught the AI how to use all our new features, namely mostly <coughs> archaeology. So. What else is new? Getting a new crash reporter that will send your crash report as soon as they happen rather than the next time you start the game. And that's usually good because if you want to start up the game, you want to start up the game, you don't want to send a report. But if it just happened, it's the same with learning, right? If you just happened, you still care about it and you send it back and maybe they can learn something from it. Hopefully. We've improved our non-Steam network stack for connectivity issues. Now that's something I'm looking into too, using the Paradox Launcher. I've tried it once and it has led to some problems, but it's in beta still, so that's good. And maybe it, it can also increase performance. I, it, I mean, it could do that. It will hopefully do that. And now, enough of my yammering. That's the uh, technical lead on Stellaris. He's yammering. Ah, he's not yammering. And that's, that's that's probably just tech talk. That much. And as you can see, most people agree with that um, and are happy about that. And let's hope it delivers a lot this time. And uh, it failed to deliver last time. They promised something big about this. But that was also because the game's complexity <laughs> was just increased like... <laughs> Uh, at least threefold or something with the, with the job introduction and you could not deliver on a promise that uh, included improved performance in the late game reasonably uh, i you i mean in theory it was an improved performance because the game wasn't wasn't notably slower than before with a much increased load 
<laughs> but looking at that is, I mean, if you're the, the consumer, the player of this, you you want a result that was promised and not not a relative promise kept. So will I, I'm <laughs> I'm positive this time that it will work because they've they've brought strong arguments for this. And so, uh, what do you think about this? If someone is an expert in all of this, like in informatic, in programming, uh, in in that, maybe someone could say about this something that is more competent than my not yammering, but maybe stammering, <laughs> stuttering. <laughs> I'm just happy it is that way. So uh, have a great time until next time and happy gaming. This is Manuel Khan signing out.